Right. Here we go. Good morning, Rotarians and guests and friends. Thanks for being here on this. Who caught that sunrise? Oh my God. It was like, oh, it must be Earth Day. Let's put up the sun. That was pretty, pretty cool. Um, I may or may not have tried to get a photo while driving over. So uh, let's uh, real quick, we'll acknowledge and introduce our illustrious district governor, Dustin Littlefield. Thanks for being here. Yay! Any visiting Rotarians this morning from other clubs on Zoom? No, not speaking. Okay, how about Rotaract or Interact members? I know Sarah has been very interested and in, uh, engaging Interact in some of our weekend activities, so it's great. How about guests of Rotarians? We do have that. Uh, would you like to come to the club in the morning? Oh, yeah. Put a guest here in the room. Uh, Carol. Um, we have our speakers, and I'll introduce her later. I'm Carolyn Griffin. I'm going to work with you right now. Speaker Carolyn, Mark Christopher. Thanks for being here. Anyone else on Zoom? Nope. Okay. We have a lot of Save the Dates coming up uh, this weekend, uh, Saturday in particular. AJ and or Michael might want to say a little bit about this, but we're building some small garden beds in cooperation with Cooperation Humble. Is that right? Okay. Come on up. <laughs> That's your cue. <laughs> I, I, you notice how we put the tables out as an obstacle. Yeah, it's not going to Good morning. Um, so yeah, uh, in in uh, cooperation with uh, cooperation humble, uh, they um, uh, build these garden boxes and regularly find families in the community um, and uh, place these garden boxes with soil and start so that uh, families who uh, could use some fresh food have this as an option in their life. So um, we, um, Carol introduced cooperation humble to us at the fall of last year and. Uh, we planned on um, doing a little bit of a project. It's a good hands-on opportunity. And uh, Michael uh, worked hard and got some donations for us, and he's hosting. So uh, this will be a fun project to build a couple boxes, and then we'll uh, do a distribution later on. So uh, come out. The Sign Up Genius is out, so look for that. Thank you. So Michael, I understand. Uh, are there any tricks to get to your house? Uh Look for the big Mormon church. I'm right behind it. Got it. Up there at McKinleyville. Okay. And I know the address is on the sign of genius. Thanks for sending that out, AJ. Uh, thanks. Okay. And then uh, also, hands on community service. Carol, we've got a highway cleanup coming right up. Yeah. Come on over. All right. Um, on Saturday, April 30th, I know that's coming right up, but we missed the last one because of rain. This one's going to be early. So you can just get in. Get out, get on with the rest of your day, 8.30 out at the Humboldt Coastal Nature Center. We meet out there. And um, if we get enough people, we should be able to knock that out in an hour. And uh, so come on out uh, and we'll see you then. And then you can get on with the rest of your Saturday. Okay, so thank you. Carol, I understand that uh, your committee for the highway cleanup is looking into a, one of the little- uh, Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Some of you may have read in, um, it was in the news recently that um, uh, Views by California, oh gosh, now I forget the name of it, with Caltrans, they are creating these little parklets. And there is a tiny little parklet right on our strip of highway. And so we're looking into adopting that. So if you come out, you can check out the site for that new parklet. And it's the first one in the state. And uh, I'm looking into whether we can add that to what we adopt. Thank you, Carol. Now you notice, you'll notice that date is in uh, big, bold green. I'm, keep that in your head for a few minutes. We'll get there. Uh, Vanessa's renewal and uh, firesides are coming up. Vanessa, I, I think, is online this morning. And uh, please do RSVP for that. It's important to let her know who's coming to the Griffin on the second. Our charter celebration, speaking of RSVPs, please do, whether you're going or not, sign up. There's a sign up genius. You got the letters, uh, whatever way you respond, just let us know because by next Friday, we have to have it nailed down. Right. Yeah. And we've only received from about half. about half the club so far has responded. So 
If you can't go, we understand, but please let us know. Either way. Sunrise Scramble, we are. RSVP, please. RSVP, yeah. As in, let us know. <laughs> um, Sunrise Scramble, we've sold out our teams. So we've got the golf teams. Great job. There, as of last night, there are three more sponsor slots available um, and a little bit of. You're okay, Terry. Or Maggie, um, mute, 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 got it, yay. Okay, so make sure that uh, as Rebecca, who's been doing a great job of keeping each team kind of apprised of where you are, uh, respond to those. If, if your team hasn't got your stuff together, uh, please contact her for ideas. Basically at this time, we're looking for three more sponsors and some smallish $250, $300, gifts of some kind and since the teams are in fours if it's possible to do kind of your gift as a group of four items that can be split easily that's pretty cool too but they can be individual awards as well we do so we're going to get to the raffle real soon here <laughs> and then of course we've got district conference coming up we've got a few more details on that but let's let's hop back to the uh, hands-on community service so on saturday april 30th we've got what is it highway cleanup right okay up next also on the 30th you know highway cleanup ends at about 10 might finish a little early then at 10 you've got the rotary parade over in eureka that's just show up and enjoy all right that's sponsored by old town uh, rotary club of eureka and then Later that same day, the 30th, you've got the Humble Wine Festival. So you notice that's, that's like a, a rotary trifecta. You can go to three things. You can serve, observe, and enjoy. Okay. So if, if I get word that somebody or somebody has done that, call me up. Necessary. Call me when to all three. Somebody's got to mute there. Okay. And uh, let me, one second, sorry. Yeah, right. There he is. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> I, I mean, Maggie, good Lord. Okay, one second here. We're going to do a little uh, functional logistics here. And I don't see Maggie. Where's Maggie? There you are. Okay. Maggie, you now have the power of the mute button. Okay, so if you go to all three of those, Please let me know, and I'd be happy to take you to lunch and talk it over. I just, you know, I'd be happy to take you to lunch anyway. But let me know. Please uh, see if if you can squeeze all three of three of those into a Saturday. That'd be a lot of fun. Happy Earth Day, everybody! Uh, you know, John took this photo with his drone a couple of years, a few years back, and I, I thought that was kind of fitting. It's right on our social media site. It's, it's our little world, right? It's our club. So. Uh, and then I, I stole that logo, John, the, the Earth Day logo off their website and made it there. But um, I just wanted to restate for all of us, part of what Rotary does, it's one of our newer avenues of service or um, uh, causes is supporting the environment. And so this is a statement from the uh, Rotary International website. It's right up near the front pages. We are committed to supporting activities that strengthen the conservation and protection of natural resources, advance ecological sustainability, and foster harmony between communities and the environment. We empower communities to access grants and other resources, embrace local solutions, and spur innovation in an effort to address the causes and reduce the effects of climate change and environmental degradation. We'll hear a little bit about some of the uh, community actions that happen locally here from North Coast Environmental Center. Um, and one of the things you'll see is we don't have to invent it. There are so many efforts going on right now, but we've got to pay attention and partner and do our part. So with that, um, one of the things that I've encountered uh, myself, you know, I, I grew up with literal backs of the land hippies as parents. And so they subscribed to and, and brought home the Eco News since I was a little kid and, uh, you know, we grew up out in the mountains and um, I, as most kids do, turned it out resistance phase where, you know, I started saying, whoa, whoa, this is propaganda and all that. And now I've, of course, made the logical turn to, oh, gosh, dang, my parents were right. We're in a mess. So so one, one of the efforts, though, that, that can help all of us as Rotarians when we're having those conversations, this is something we're good at 
as people who can speak to many viewpoints and groups is friendly persuasion. And if you, you're looking for ideas on that, hop on the site, go to the, this cause and look up at friendly persuasion. You don't have to beat somebody down with facts and stats and all that, just have a conversation. And that's a better way to bring somebody in to at least be open to your point of view and reality. Speaking of supporting the environment, last weekend we had some fun, right, AJ? How's, how's your back doing after we hoisted that pounder thing in and out of the truck? <laughs> that was a lot of fun. We had a lot of show up. Um, this is phase two of our rainwater catchment program pro project. And uh, I, I was astounded when I showed up at how deep and it looked really hard, you guys, with the pickaxes the first weekend that I missed. I mean, it was dirt and then gravel and then dirt and then this weed mat had to be like three quarters of an inch thick you, you couldn't tear it or cut it and you had to jam at it with a shovel and so they did a great job prepping the hole for this frame and gravel and i got to say craig and aj you know you you the sign up was to show up in the afternoon and then i get there and they've got all this gravel out and all the tools and the stuff and so they've been at it since nine in the morning, I think, getting that up, all stuff staged for the rest of us to show up and say, look what we did. So <laughs> thank you to both of you for arranging that. But uh, AJ, what's this? Yeah, thank you. What's the status on the tank? I know last weekend they were talking about we might be able to get it this week. It was scheduled to be delivered yesterday, but their delivery truck got delayed. So we'll deliver it today. Get the tank delivery at noon today. So we're really excited to see that come through to fruition. And once the tank's in, of course, the, the uh, folks at uh, Cal Poly Humboldt that are working with us on this will get it hooked up. And maybe we'll get a little rain before it dries up for the, for the summer and we'll see how it works. But, so the, the reason for doing this is, thank you, Craig. Uh, it's basically delayed rainfall, if you will. It, it's falling on a roof, and normally that would just go down the downspout on the gutters and flow out over the, the land during the wet season when it's really not needed for the plants and garden that they have out there. There's an orchard, uh, they've got garden space. And so by putting up this tank and diverting the gutters into the tank, it fills the tank and you can use it when it's needed in the dry season. And it really doesn't have a negative impact for the, the watershed because that water that was falling in that place is going to go back to that place anyway. It's just putting it there when it's really needed instead of letting it gush off when it's too wet anyway. So yeah, it's, it's basically free clean water from the sky to irrigate and nourish and use for whatever it is. I've got them at my house. I did that decades ago. And every year, you know, we get excited when there's a little sprinkle in the middle of summer and it fills the tanks back up. We're like, okay, we're good till uh, August now. And it's, it's really fun to be that connected to what's happening with our rainfall. So thanks to everybody who showed up, AJ, Greg, Amanda, Sophie, Robin, Dallas, Hannah, uh, Hannah, and uh, the Cal Poly Humboldt team. That was, uh, that was a good day of work. Fast for kids. Uh, we're flush on the rest of this month, which is almost over, but there's another week. And then please do sign up for May. John, do you have any Comments on uh, keeping that going. Sign up. Sign up. <laughs> that's the comment. Sign up. So each each of these uh, little pink uh, sign up buttons you can see there. That's an opportunity, right? That's that's not a, uh, a burden. That's an opportunity. So look to sign up, Tina, to do that. Yeah, but that's made um, the equipment available um, Wednesday afternoon. So you go and fix up the food, you take it to the equipment, and then Tapir can meet there. Um, that's one. Yep. Um, so, so what he's explaining is Vanessa basically has a standing order. If you're picking up the food, oops, I went too far. Uh, if you're picking up the food, you can bring it to the Griffin. It'll get packed up and then delivered from there. So thank you. Um, Romy, would you like to start this off? This is our diversity, equity, and inclusion minute for, for this month. Um, you know, it makes me think of that, that Ian just had up the pictures of, of we're always doing the environmental effort. And similarly, we're always working on diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's Rotary. And, um, and so one thing we're doing is looking for partnerships. We're, we're always looking for doing new projects. And I say that to all of you, 
But another thing that, that um, AJ said, you know what, we're doing a really cool thing. And if we look historically, we know that systemic racism has been, um, ha has um, put people on entirely different trajectories in the course of their lives in the future and their, and their children for generations to come. And um, systemic racism in, in lending is, is certainly something that we can document, redlining and preventing people from getting um, loans to be able to purchase homes, to be able to start businesses has been a tremendous um, impact on, on where we stand as a nation and, and the equity and the opportunity. And so um, looking at where people are making a difference on on every front of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, when when uh, AJ let me know that this is something that's happening with Umqua Bank, I just, um, you want to talk about this this program? Sure. I wanted to just recognize and, and celebrate this. Um, and, and it actually made a whole new idea for a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. Let's look for these opportunities to celebrate this kind of effort. What's happening with all of our members? What are you doing in your lives professionally to create opportunity, to, to change the trajectory, to include people? Um, and, and this is just a beautiful example. Uh, thank you, Romy and Ian, for the opportunity. Um, I always, I've heard of crowdsourcing or crowdfunding, and um, uh, I just recently learned that Umqua Bank partnered with Kiva to be able to allow uh, smaller businesses. And uh, they haven't been in business for a long time. They don't have the um, history or the financials to support conventional lending. And I felt like this was a good opportunity for um, those smaller businesses to reach out to their community, use their social capital to uh, reach out to their friends and family and let them know what they're doing and uh, find a way to get a loan and it Kiva offers with our partnership a 0% loan. Um, and for $25, you can support your small local entrepreneur. And uh, in this case, I'm going to uh, four times that. So $25 will turn into a hundred dollar loan. And these smaller loans as the borrower uh, conducts business and they pay the loan back, uh, you get your money back to then turn around and lend again this, these other small businesses. So I was excited that we uh, offer this uh, new opportunity and this partnership with Kiva and uh, that it was a great opportunity to share. So, questions? How do you get the match? Do you go through Kiva or do you go through a program? So um, I have to source some local entrepreneurs. Uh, it can be any um, um, entrepreneur in our footprint actually, but um, I'm working with two individuals at the moment who are applying and once they get their application approved, um, I'm going to do my best to share it through social media, and then you get the opportunity to be able to uh, support them with your check. So, um, is there a maximum or minimum size loan for this program? Um, uh, they'll establish a goal, so uh, I think the range will be uh, usually twenty five hundred to ten thousand, um, and so they set that goal, and you can contribute as little as twenty five dollars or as much as you want yeah, as a loan. So, so it's a, a loan; you get the money back. Right. Yeah. As opposed to the, the GoFundMe. So once again, acknowledging this kind of work in our community, super important. Look for other opportunities when our committee can do a shout out and recognition, and maybe we'll all be inspired to do that kind of work. And thank you, Adrian. Yeah. And like we mentioned a few minutes ago, you don't have to invent it. There's those facilities and organizations in place looking for help. So seek that and help. Thank you to the book donors. Uh, we had a, a fun time uh, checking out the books and uh, reading a, a few passages. And uh, yeah, we're all silly people, but uh, that's part of our diversity equity and inclusion projects uh, was to donate uh, books to the, um, it's the teacher's resource library effectively. Um, for actually, those, those books will go into all of our K-12 libraries all over the okay. county. This is um, a book drive every year with, with that we partner with NAACP. It's their book drive. Um, last year, we were able to raise $1,000. This year, we were able to raise a little over $700. And, um, and we wound up buying 37 books this year, more books last year, more books next year. And what they're doing is they're being distributed to K-12 to libraries, um, big schools, little schools all over the county. So that um, when kids go to check out books in the library, they see representation and celebration of themselves, no matter who they are. Thank you, Ron.
We can schedule for a district conference. It is definitely time to register. What's the deadline to actually register to attend? Uh, what is it? May 13th. May 13th. Don't so, don't so really, let's say May 1st, right? Yeah. Let's, let's get this done so that Dustin and his team know who's coming. Um, Look for the, the email is up on the screen there at the bottom. It, it looks like that. Sur just search district conference registration. You'll find it in your email. It takes about a minute to sign up, or if you really can't, to say, sorry, I can't attend. It, you know, a reservation works either way. It's nice for the organizers to know how many do we expect. It's really important. Uh, but speaking of district conference opportunities, we got a lot of signups. Are we good on the uh, Sergeant at Arms help for that morning? Okay, so we're good there. I'll leave the sign up open in case somebody else wants to click in and sign up. But we've got this uh, this challenge from the three Eureka clubs are teaming up to show that they have more hospitality than Arcata Sunrise. And I, I'm thinking, good luck, guys. <laughs> right? <laughs> so Dustin wants this to be fun. Do you, do you want to say anything about what you're looking for, Dustin? If, if you do, come on up. Come on up. Um, but for those of you who, who've been to uh, pets in the past, typically um, Friday and Saturday nights are capped by. Um, they, uh, are, and we'll start from the beginning. Uh, they're they're capped by uh, uh, hospitality suites where you go, and each uh, uh, district uh, kind of hosts their own uh, room, hotel room for hospitality. So you're welcome to go in and out of these rooms, and so we kind of wanted to emulate that at the conference here. And uh, um, it was actually uh, Clark Swan's idea to make it a little bit of a competition. So on Friday night, of course, it's uh, Arcata Sunrise versus the three Eureka Clubs. And uh, we have suites reserved at the Comfort Inn. So you'll go there and we'll see you know, who can make it more fun and inviting and just kind of a time to mingle and, uh, and chat with the, uh, the folks from the southern part and our part of the district. So, Craig. And Dustin, can people sign up or attend just part of the conference and say they can't make Friday for the beginning of Saturday? Hopefully not just the hospitality streets. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so somebody can just make one and take the top and still sign up? Good question. They absolutely can. And you and we can also bring people that uh, aren't in Rotary yet or are interested in seeing some of the speakers. So that's another uh, element that's we haven't really advertised in the past, but it's you know it's doable. The plus ones are always doable. Um, but then, you know, if you have someone that's interested in seeing, say, Stanford speak on Saturday night or Jamie Carroll speak on Friday night, we can we can uh, uh, get them a registration link and get them in, too. But they have to buy a meal. They do have to buy a meal. Exactly. Exactly. You got to buy one meal. <laughs> but yes, thank you. Um, so anyway, that's that. So um, I have no doubt our club will put up a formidable, will be a formidable opponent for the three Eureka clubs. Yes. So what makes us more competitive if this is a competition? And thank you, Craig, for asking that question, because that was one of my questions. I'm like, they can't give us three days. Like, kinetics around the corner. Like, I've got stuff to do. But, like, I would like to come to several events, and I volunteer to help set up. Sure, um, sure. Just so, like, what, part, you know, right? we were to, you know, go on and, like, you know, you know make sure everyone is support. But what makes us more competitive? Yes. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> so, so two more than that. Two more than that. Uh, two things there. One, so we we shortened the conference this year, so it's really only Friday night and uh, Saturday all day. Uh, and then you can come to you know you can come in and out of different portions of that. We'll have, we'll have events going on. And it's at the lodge. We all know how to walk in and out of the lodge and be a part of things. Um, and then uh, we're going to have you know a panel of judges, a bit like you know you have at the kinetic race. So you know I'll be on the panel. We might. You know, I'll try not to be biased uh, in judging to see if, if ours is better. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, Yeah, yeah. Have, have, the EI program for about you know the, the water tank project, you know, put, put up displays of that kind of stuff so other clubs. But we'll find the district conference is trying to align with what the clubs did this year, so it's a great place to see what are the clubs doing, what great ideas they have. Most of the best rubbery ideas in the world are still from other rubber clubs. So exactly. You don't have to reinvent it. You just gotta, you just gotta keep it going. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> So, so we'll work with Dustin to understand, you know, what the opportunity is there, when we can sneak in and set up and get ahead of the other clubs and to see the competition question. Yep. You know, we, we may, I may have a few plants in the other clubs that can see what they're doing. Exactly. Now, now we're talking. Now we're talking. That's the spirit. <laughs> So, so make sure that uh, you're watching for that opportunity to get in on the fun parts too. You know, this this will be fun, and uh, most of all, show up and be who you are to represent our club at our 
at our hospitality suite. You know, that's that's really from my perspective. Our main attraction is the people in this club. We're we're really really fun folks to hang out and talk with, and we've got a lot of ideas and no problem entertaining guests. So, thanks, Dustin, for that, giving us that opportunity. Um, <laughs> well, last week you had such an inspiring something to say. Now it's just coffee. I see where I rank. <laughs> okay, uh, Sunrise Scramble Tournament. This is uh, one of our big focuses. You know, we we do put a lot of energy into the projects we do, and you know, most of the work happens at a committee uh, to figure out what we're doing and how to do it, and the logistics and getting people there. Uh, but to do those things, we got to raise money to pay for them. So with the Sunrise Scramble Tournament coming right up, um, Rebecca, do you want to talk about how the raffle part of that's going to work? First, just in that, that competition question from the last thing, I asked for this before. I am trying to collect photos of some of our club projects, like your favorite photo. Don't send me 20 photos, half of which are crap. Um, in part, in part, as part of our um, DEI uh, component, I'm putting together sort of a PowerPoint because one of the things we're trying to do, you know, slowly but surely, is reach out to other organizations and say, hey, this is who we are. Just like we have guests come to us, we want to reach out and say, hey, this is who we are and how do you need help? So um, for that event, plus also for the golf event, I would like to have those and then also, you know, print out some big, you know, items that say, hey, this is what Rodeo does. We have our old signs but they're getting a little outdated and we do so much more than the four you know vinyl signs that we have so if you have photos send them to me at rebecca.rotary at gmail.com pretty simple and please title them with like the name of the event if you could possibly do that that would make my life easier so that will help us for our ti outreach that will help us for our golf and i'll also share that with dustin for our hospitality suite room so that we can show off what we've done so that would be really helpful um okay now for the golf tournament thank you all our teams for participating um i guess the big thing there's two big things coming up um one will be the day of the event so we'll be sending out information there and part of what at least what I learned and sort of a little bit of history with our spring event is it's not just about like earning money. It's also about us showing off to the community and being hospitable to our community. Um, when we used to do the event at the community center, it was really important that we had Rotarians at the door that greeted our guests, that made them feel welcome, that made them understand, oh, here's where this is. Here's where this is. This is how the day works, right? Because often these people have given been given a ticket from their company or they have no idea what's going on so we will be asking for a lot of day of participation so that is friday may 13th if you can plan to take the morning off um you know we should be pretty much done by noon even if you just wanted to show up for the first couple hours to really make our guests feel welcome right we are part of our community and the people who are participating in our event are you know part of our community so we really want to outreach okay raffle so we're not doing our, you know, put one raffle in one prize. We're doing one raffle pool. So that gives us the ability to sell raffle tickets ahead of time. We only have about, you know, five raffle items. I don't know if you have the list. We have the bar from Wallace and Hines. Next week, I will have a little more formal presentation on the raffle items. And I will have raffle tickets. Lisa, I don't know if anybody's contacted you, but we'll need to try and get into storage. And maybe you know where those sheets of tickets are. And thank you. Okay. Um, so we will be doing the traditional, you know, 20 bucks, get a sheet of 25. If you sell them ahead, we promise to rip them up and kind of crimple them a little bit and then put them, we'll have one of those big turners and we'll take out the prizes. But essentially you can get the bar, which is a huge value. You can get, uh, we have a barbecue donated by Hensel's, the one of those green eggs. Um, we're going to have a Las Vegas vacation weekend. Um, donated by a couple of Rotarian teams. And then we're looking, that's where um, Ian said baskets. We're looking for a couple um, people to sort of put together some baskets of just some, you know, really nice items. I'm, I'm particularly looking also for um, sets of four Oyster Fest tickets, sets of four crab tickets so that, you know, we can also enhance the prizes for our teams, right? All our golf teams are for players. They want to leave with something. Um, we're trying to maximize the amount of prizes that we're bringing in so that we can maximize the amount of dollars that we're doing to our club. And we're also hoping that by doing the raffle ahead of time, we're gonna bring in you know, more money for the club and for our um, different events. So next week, I will have more information on how you can go sell to all your friends, need not be present to win. Um, and we're really hoping to, yeah, um, amp up this event a little bit in that way. And if, does that answer all your, oh, yes, Dick. 
Uh, I have a question. Yes. I think I'll be starting with it. Hopefully, they'll be able to hear me. Okay. I can. Uh, there was someone for, um, online, uh, Angela, <laughs> asked whether, um, asked, asked, she, she basically was asking who the sponsors already, so they already have are. And I'm going to suggest that you put that information <laughs> on Slack. So we all know, so we're not. Um, so it'll be as soon as we fill out the last three sponsors, we're collecting the logos. We'll have that posted to our social media so, and, and our website. And so people don't get contact again. But we'll be sold out, so no more contact. Sponsors. Right. So, but if they wanted to go out into the community and say, "Hey, will you give me, you know, donate this or don't," we can we can totally put out that list. Who uses Slack and what channel would they post on if they use Slack? <laughs> We've got that. I will send out an email to all my raffle group. What's the first sponsors? I'm sorry. That sounds Rebecca, good. That's a good point. I, I Rebecca, know. I have a Slack channel. Rebecca, I have a Slack channel if uh, we can set it up as Rotary Sunrise. Susan says she'll do it. Okay. okay. I did set up a like a, a sunrise scramble channel, but I'm not going to do that or use it. I don't know. I don't know if the Slack channel is useful for that reason. Yeah. 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 So there it is. So, I mean, we'll make you know, sure everybody has the information. I, I promise to send it out a day later than I would expect to have. Right. It's, it's forthcoming. Definitely coming. I, will never <laughs> I, know, I know we have a <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. You know, the <laughs> one. <laughs> okay. So I, I got a. You're right. Crappy photos are out. Thank you. So, real shout out to Rebecca and Susan in particular for really leading the charge. And then it's almost invisible, but Melinda is keeping, and with Sophie's help, keeping the record straight of, you know, who signed up to sponsor and who signed up to be a team and making sure that, you know, when we hit that number that we're done and we're not continuing to solicit. So thanks to all of those folks who are uh, keeping this going in good order. It really helps.